Welcome back, fellow Sojourners, to Appropriating the Culture, the HQ of the Christian Revolt, where we will plot, scheme, and devise our plan to take over the culture by force, but nicely. I'm Pastor Shane. I'll be your field commander today as we appropriate some culture. So last week I was a little harsh on Christian film, and for that I apologize. I promise that will never happen again. From here on out, I will be a lot harsher on Christian film. But why stop at Christian films? Why not throw Christian music under the bus while you're at it? Great question. And to answer that, I'll need a little help from my old friend, Mr. Martin. It's because Christian music is actually pretty decent and doesn't fall into the same sort of pitfalls as Christian film. As we said, we are bad producers of film because we're bad consumers of film. But Christians are much better consumers of music as it's a natural accompaniment of worship. We sing, we play every Sunday and probably throughout the week. And whereas our children are not greatly exposed to film and television, they are exposed to music and encouraged to participate in it and are taught music in a way they're not taught filmmaking. In addition, Christian music is much less confused in purpose and audience. Unlike Christian films, Christian music recognizes their audience and speaks their language. By and large, Christian music is made by Christians, for Christians, and all of its marketing, language, sensibilities, themes, and worldview are directed with that audience in mind. And that's at least cohesive in a way that Christian film is not, which confuses its purpose with its audience. Now, you can, of course, mock and nitpick and say that Christian music is overly simplistic, as the Babylon Bee often does. But even that has some degree of intentionality, as a lot of these songs are meant to be used as worship songs in churches and meant to be played and sung by musicians with wildly varying skill sets. And in that sense, simpler is better. We could also criticize its subculture nature, the fact that it follows rather than leads, that it chases trends rather than starts them. And for sure, there are plenty of ways in which we can improve. But in comparison to Christian film, the problems of Christian music are minor. Thanks, Mr. Martin. Hope that clears things up. Now let's turn our attention back to the problems of Christian film. As we said last week, Christian films often confuse their audience and their purpose. Most Christian films are meant to be evangelical, to reach a non-Christian audience, but all of the marketing, aesthetics, and sensibilities are targeted at Christian audiences. Now, in some cases, that's just an innocent mistake, but in other areas, I think it's actually quite cynical. Oh, that sound means it's time to break things down in the conspiracy corner. You want to know how to make money in the Christian film industry? You slap together a low-budget evangelical film and you market it to Christians. See, the production companies know that Christians will support evangelical films regardless of the quality because they think it's going to reach non-Christians. But the dirty secret is, it's not meant to. Now, it's always meant for a Christian audience. That's why it's marketed and sold that way. That's where the money is. If they actually directed their evangelical films to non-Christians, well, then they'd have to actually compete in the general marketplace. That's a more dubious proposition and far less lucrative. No, it's better to sell to churches, and churches will buy because the films are evangelical. Oh, sure, they'll say, bring a friend. But you could always do that. Bring a friend is just a way of selling 600 tickets to a 300 person church. And you'll find a lot of churches very accommodating, because after all, you can't put a price on evangelism. Well, that got dark. But regardless of whether or not these films are cynically or sincerely produced, it is still worthwhile to evaluate the intention behind them and whether or not they hit that target. The evangelical intention of most Christian films is yet another contributing factor for the subpar quality of Christian film as it leads to a clumsy and artful presentation that lacks all subtlety. 
Jesus said, I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. We already explained the importance of recognizing your audience and speaking their language. But recognizing the audience is not only in terms of content, but also in terms of approach. Jesus had important things to tell his disciples, things that they desperately needed to know. But he realized that they were not ready for it yet. Jesus recognized his audience and adopted his approach to best meet them. In fact, that was his practice throughout his entire ministry. He gradually and slowly revealed more and more to his followers rather than dump the totality of truth on them all at once. It wasn't until the very end of his ministry that Jesus' disciples were finally able to say, Now you are speaking clearly and without figures of speech. But movies and narratives are figures of speech. They are parables. They're not dissertations, they're not essays, they're not even sermons. No, they're stories, and the meaning and themes of them should be discovered and unearthed and wrestled with, not preached. Some people understood the meanings of Jesus' parables. Some people didn't. But Jesus was content to say, he who has ears, let him hear. That's a great lesson for us. But because we see film as just a vehicle for evangelism, the message is everything. And we cannot possibly have people missing the message. That won't do. So we have to get rid of all subtlety, all nuance, all ambiguity, and all the tools of narrative art. And instead, hit people in the face with a sledgehammer that says, Jesus is Lord on it. Oh, they'll get the message. But their takeaway will not be that Jesus is Lord. Their takeaway will be that they hate you and that you have no business wielding a sledgehammer. And that's not only a problem in the veracity and force of our message, but also the extent of our message as well. There's an impulse in Christian filmmaking to always tell the exhaustive truth, where it's like the goal of every Christian movie is to elicit a conversion to Christianity by the time the credits roll, which is the relationship equivalent of proposing on your first date. Hi, I'm Shane. Will you marry me? And how many kids do you want? Now, that did work with my wife, but trust me, most of the time it just leads to a restraining order. Now, we do want people to come to Jesus. That's a noble goal. But we get so wrapped up in the importance of our message that we fail to recognize the needs of our audience. And they're often not ready to hear it or to bear it. There's a natural urgency that we feel as Christians because we have the water of life. But if we're not seriously considering the state of our audience, then the net effect is like shooting them in the face with a fire hose. That's not a good way to drink, and it's not a good way of approaching art either. But it is a fitting simile for our sponsor today. Appropriating the Culture is brought to you by California Fire Hoses. Who needs water when you have California fire hoses? Extinguish your flames with the power of happy feelings. Each certified California fire hose outputs positive vibes and a continuous stream of up to a thousand gallons of positivity per minute. Forget reservoirs, forget dams, forget what you think you know about irrigation or forest management and pick up your California fire hose today. And don't forget to let them know that we sent you. Alrighty, so, If we're not expecting a conversion after every Christian film, then what does it actually mean to be evangelical? The reality is the impersonal nature of art exhibition makes it a poor vehicle for making disciples. There's no relationship with the audience member, and that means that the gospel presentation in its entirety is most likely and most often beyond what the audience is ready to bear. So rather than tell the exhaustive truth, we should be telling a truth. It doesn't give everything, but it points and nudges people toward Jesus or inclines people to be more favorable to Christianity and a Christian worldview. Always swinging for the fences is most likely to result in more strikeouts than home runs, and often it's better just to get on base. The better purpose of art is not to reap the harvest, but to shape the soil to make it more receptive to the gospel. And if you happen to be taking a drink every time I switch metaphors, go to the hospital you have alcohol poisoning. Now, for those of you who don't play drinking games and are still conscious, the desire for Christian film to immediately result in Christian conversion has a further problem in that it spoils the art. It leads to clunky exposition, heavy-handed narratives, and themes that lack all subtlety. 
The preeminence of the message undercuts the artistic expression by taking away the powerful tools of nuance, subtlety, and exploration. Discovering meaning in a movie is more impactful than hearing a message from a bullhorn. But the good news is, despite all these various problems, we're getting better at this. I have much more to say to you, more than you can probably now bear. So we'll stop there for now. Be sure to send in your questions or your comments. You can reach me on the basic media platforms at in Shane Miller on Twitter, Nathan Shane Miller on my author's Facebook page. Drop a comment on my locals page. And if you like this channel and what we're doing here, hey, help us out. Subscribe, rate, and review. And we'll see you back here again next week to appropriate some more culture.